Welcome back to Chicken Recaps. I will be narrating the movie titled The Hunt. Athena sits at her home office engaging in a group chat with her rich friends as they discuss the upcoming hunt at the manor. They capture unsuspecting members of the public and kill them for sport. The date arrives and the elitists board a private jet to the location of their twisted festival. Kelly, the flight attendant, offers Richard some caviar, but he rejects the offer and rubs it in her face, saying he had some the previous night unlike her. She then brings some expensive champagne for him instead, but begins to overpour it and even drops the bottle in fear as a burly man appears in the cabin to everyone's surprise. Richard wonders how he's awake, but it's clear to the trained eye that they didn't put enough tranquilizer in this big bear. The man starts to panic as he slurs his words. Ted informs him that he's a doctor while trying to calm him down. The doctor requests for Kelly to get some towels on the floor before carefully guiding him to lie on it. Ted asks the attendant for her pen, which he uses to stab the guy in the neck. I don't think they teach that at med school. The man winces in pain as he bleeds out. While Richard admonishes the doctor for starting too early, the big man grabs the bottle on the floor and knocks his attacker with it. He then breaks the bottle bar fight style and starts wildly swinging it as the frightened elites try to calm him down. Athena grabs one of her designer shoes whilst creeping up behind him and lodges the heel in his visual hole. Ted drags him back into a room where the big guy hears one last cry for help from a blonde girl before biting the dust. Blondie later wakes up with a bar gag in the woods. She immediately tries to remove it, but it's padlocked. She notices Crystal, who's also gagged by a pond, creating a makeshift compass with a pin and the static charge from rubbing her hair. She calls to her but gets ignored. Blondie sees a man and follows him instead. They arrive at an open field with a giant wooden crate in the center. Others in the same state also start to appear as the man makes his way straight to the crate. He begins to open it with the supplied crowbar to everyone's protest as they fear it's rigged. They take cover when he eventually pries it open. Everyone expects an explosion, but a pig in a dress comes out of the box instead. The man reaches in and pulls out a mobile armory. They all rush over to pick their weapon of choice. Blondie notices a small envelope attached to the separated panel that has keys inside. She uses it to remove the gag on a nearby man, so he returns the favor. They also use the keys to free everyone else. With their speech restored, they try to assess the situation as they arm themselves. Don gives Blondie a gun and explains very simply how to use it. Their period of respite is interrupted by gunshots. She tries to take cover but gets hit in the head. The elites start picking them off one at a time as they try to run for cover inside the woods. Some individuals manage to escape and converge at a barbed wire fence that they jump over. An old man from this new group is struck with an arrow preventing him from completing the jump. The rest are forced to leave him behind while he gets finished off with a grenade. The group of three rush down the path where they find themselves at a gas station. They barge into the convenience store run by Ma and Pop. The old couple mistake them for armed robbers as they immediately alert them that there is $200 in the cash register. The trio use a nearby shelf to barricade the shop entrance which kinda sorta secures the place. They still hold the shop owners at gunpoint as they want to know their current location. The couple alert them that they are in Arkansas to their confusion. Ma and Pop plead not to be hurt, but they are not interested and request for a phone. One member calls the police to report the situation describing it as Manor Gate, but the operator is a bit nonchalant about his complaints, but assures him that help is on the way. The woman in the trio eats some sweets from the shop and starts to choke because it's poisoned. As the other two try to help, Ma and Pop gas them with some lethal toxins while protected by gas masks. The other guy tries to shoot, but Pop has a quicker draw. The old couple are part of the hunting party. They complain about the mess as they clean up the place and move the bodies awaiting their next victim. Athena radios to check in on the couple. They report that they have slain three of them. She alerts them that Crystal is heading their way unarmed and should arrive in about five minutes. Ma and Pop get back into character in preparation. Crystal enters the shop cautiously and asks for a packet of cigarettes. She reaches into her shoes for her emergency cash before asking what state she's in. They reply telling her Arkansas. Pop starts to reach for his gun. She looks at the change before suddenly knocking Ma's head into the counter. She then picks up their gun and shoots Pop with his own gun. The old lady pleads for mercy as Crystal reveals that cigarettes are $6 in Arkansas before finishing her off too. She opens the box of cigarettes to find them empty to her disappointment. She combs through the shop for any potential dangers and comes across the dead trio. After securing their radio and restocking on some bullets, she leaves the gas station and notices an old truck. After inspecting it, Crystal realizes that it has a EU number plate and it's rigged to explode if anyone tries to open it. She stays near the area listening to the radio chatter of the elites coordinating their movements. Athena orders Richard to check the position of Crystal as they have lost visual on her. He sends his drone to spy through the shop window, but still can't confirm her position. 
The drone is suddenly shot down by Gary to the elite's confusion. Athena figures that their prey might have access to their communications, so asks everyone to go radio silent. Gary soon emerges and begins stamping on the drone to make sure it's not operational. As he approaches the truck, Crystal whistles to catch his attention before exposing herself. The drone killer is on guard, but after she alerts him about the booby-trapped car, he believes she's friendly. She lets him know that he shouldn't have shot the drone because now they know their location. He follows her to some train tracks she found earlier, as they trace it around. Gary gives his theory on why this is happening, and it's based on an article that was circulating online. He explains that every year, the liberal elites kidnap normal people and hunt them for sport in a mansion in Vermont. He forwarded it to over 50 friends when he found the article. His rambling is cut short when Crystal realizes that a train is approaching. They chase it down and board the train action movie style. Just as they catch their breath, the two hear sounds coming from deeper inside the carriage so they decide to go investigate. Some refugees come out frightened, they don't speak a word of English. Gary doesn't believe that they are real, but suspects them to be crisis actors. He starts being sarcastic about changing his views on immigration. Crystal points out that the baby looks pretty legit, but Gary calls it a crisis babies, stating that they are using it to sell the charade better. He counts down threatening to shoot them if they don't confess. However, the train saves them when it stops abruptly. It has been stopped by the army who search the carriage and find the illegal immigrants. Crystal asks Gary to hide his gun and surrender, or they will be mistaken as hostile and killed. The immigrants get lined up but Crystal and Gary are ignored to their confusion. They march over to the officer in charge and introduce themselves as Americans before Gary starts with the crisis actor talk again, explaining that he exposes these kinds of things on his podcast. Crystal cringes as he continues to talk. The soldiers completely ignore his waffle and walk off. Mike, who is one of the elites in disguise, explains that the other refugees and the soldiers are real. The train was not supposed to be stopped. He should calm down so that they can work through the problem. He promises to give them a head start before he comes after them again. This infuriates Gary, who tackles Mike and shoves one of his grenades in his pants. Everyone evacuates as he tries to remove it, but it ends up exploding him. Crystal is sent to a refugee camp separately from Gary. When she arrives, she's taken to an English-speaking gentleman who introduces himself as Dino. He asks for her papers, but she answers by asking about her current location. Dino questions if she's hunted to her surprise. He alerts her that Don told him. Don is brought in, and after some cross-examination, they are released into the camp. The number one candidate for Santa also references Manor Gate and how he can't wait to expose this when he gets back to safety. Crystal doesn't seem to care about the nuances. She only cares about surviving. While the two discuss... Dino welcomes someone from the U.S. government who takes them from the camp. As they drive to the U.S. Embassy, he hears their story and promises to contact the State Department to request military support to find the culprits. He then proceeds with a line of questioning that seems to insinuate that they were handpicked because they did something wrong. Crystal quickly catches on and kicks him out of the speeding car while taking control of it. She reverses back to make sure that the job is done. Don screams in protest during all of this. They both get out of the car where Crystal opens the boot to reveal Gary's corpse. Santa stops complaining when he sees the evidence. They also find a map that she studies while Don counts the victims. From his calculations, they are the only two left. The pig from earlier joins them just before they move off. Later that night, the elites camp in shooting post ready to pick off the remaining victims. They startle themselves when they fumble some of their guns. Their instructor, Sergeant Dale, informs them to keep their voice down. Richard decides to go outside to use the toilet, but is killed in the forest. Dale hears some clattering and unfamiliar footsteps outside, so immediately gets everyone on high alert. They get startled again when the pig drops down into the bunker, so they empty their clips inside it. The elites lower their guard to regroup, but Crystal descends and pops one of them in the head, triggering a gun battle. She disarms and shoots the sergeant, knocking him back. Peter barely manages to escape outside but receives a bullet wound. Crystal then proceeds to stab Liberty with one of her own arrows and shoots the doctor dead. She doesn't forget about Peter as she shoots him in the back with a sniper rifle. As she reloads, the sergeant comes out of nowhere and begins attacking her again, but after a brief struggle, she knocks him down with a broken pipe. Don finally joins the party. Crystal sarcastically thanks him for the help. Before she finishes off Liberty, Crystal gives Don the chance to ask her why they are doing this, but she gives an insulting answer before getting smoked. Athena heard everything over the radio and pretends that Don is one of them to confuse Crystal. She has a standoff with Santa before shooting him when he refuses to answer her broadcast. Crystal confirms that Don is dead. Athena provokes her to come and get her before cutting the transmission. She makes her way to an injured Dale and interrogates him. He reveals that he trained them and gives her the location of Athena, 
but warns her that she's the most prepared out of all the elites. From the way Crystal dispatched everyone, he makes the right assumption that she's an army veteran. After retrieving all the needed information, she finishes the sergeant. Events from one year ago are shown. The group chat of Athena and her friends got leaked, and the comments of the hunt became public knowledge. This caused a bunch of people online to spread it. It is disclosed that the comments about the hunt was a poor joke, no such thing existed. But the story picked up traction as people thought it was real, so the members involved in the chat got fired as they occupy high-profile positions. The members of the group chat decided to exact their revenge by choosing 12 of the most vocal people spreading this misinformation by ironically making the rumors real. Things move back to the present, and Crystal has arrived at the Athena's house. The elitist orders she disarm herself before entering, or she will blow her up. She meets Athena casually cooking, and they discuss the situation. It is revealed that they abducted the wrong Crystal, as they are two in their town. That was a big mistake because this one is a fighting machine low-key. Athena doesn't believe her, so they begin to fight when they punch and kick themselves around the house. Athena pulls out a shotgun when Crystal starts getting the upper hand, but she disarms her. As the brutal fight rages on, Crystal gets stabbed with a blender attachment, but she uses this to her advantage by bear-hugging Athena multiple times, which results in her death. She gets up and uses a kitchen torch to suture her wound before boarding Athena's private jet, dressed in her clothes. She asks the pilot to take her home while she has caviar and champagne with Kelly, bringing the movie to an end.